Hello, this is Nithyafield of the American black metal band Veiled, and you are listening to The Bloodshed with the Vampire on Metal Messiah Radio International. Hello, this is Nithyafield of the American black metal band Veiled, and I would like to congratulate Metal Messiah Radio with its 10-year anniversary. Nithyafield, it's a pleasure to have you here on The Bloodshed, Metal Messiah Radio International. Hello, thank you for having me. You're always welcome. Veiled are a black metal band from the U.S. founded by Nephia Fiat, an American talented musician born and raised in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And uh, this is a special interview about the band and their debut album 2018, Black Celestial Orbs. For all the fans who want to know about Veiled and its founder a little bit more, Nephia Fiat, how was your early days as a metal musician and who has inspired you? Well, to put it very simply, when I came to the realization that I wanted to play black metal, my first and initial influences were Bathory, Burzum, and Dark Throne. I think it's kind of hard to find anybody who did it any better. Because those three really, in my opinion, embody what the true sound and spirit of black metal really is. So. That's kind of where I gravitated towards when I started writing my own music. At which age you started to do music, Nephia Fiat? I was 13 when I got my first guitar, but I didn't really start writing music until uh, much later. I'd say about 17, 18 years old is when I really started to get serious about writing music. And black metal was my genre right out the gate, pretty much. Veiled began in 2013 under the moniker of Noses of the Witch, released two EP and one split with the Swedish black metal band Gra, and the band lasted until 2015 when the name was changed into Veiled. Tell us how was Noses of Witch formed and about three releases that the band did and why have you changed the name? To Veiled. Well, Gnosis of the Witch started as an idea to more or less become a vessel for the spiritual path I was walking at the time. I needed an outlet for what I was completely immersed in, which was a, a darker aspect of you know Norse shamanism and magic and so on and so forth. Um, you know, just during that time, I was doing a lot of studying and a lot of a lot of practice magically and I needed something to channel that in and that's where Gnosis of the Witch came in. You know, like as you mentioned, we did the two EPs and the last thing we did was the split with Gra. And then I just I felt like I needed a change. I needed something needed to, to change because as much as it was spiritual li spiritually liberating to do Gnosis of the Witch, musically it was very limiting and very restricting. I felt like I wasn't able to express myself the way I wanted to. So I completely revamped and changed the entire identity of the band and failed. And it's kind of hard to, to really pinpoint the exact reason of why failed became. Because I, th I felt it was, I feel it's, it was a very natural change. It just kind of happened on its own. And it just more or less just took on its own life. <laughs> Great. Since the rebirth in 2015, Veiled has released one demo cassette, Omniscient of Veil, via Iron Bonehead's production. Nephia Fiat, would you like to talk about this cassette, a demo released in 2015, and only, remember, only available this time on cassette? And uh, why have you part away with uh, drummer Swarta Daupas in 2016? <laughs> Swarta Dorthes, yes. Um, when Veiled became a band, of course, the first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to release something right away. And that's what happened with the demo tape. The demo tape was also the last thing that I did with Swarta Dorthes before he quit the band. But I feel the demo tape was a really good introduction to what I wanted to present with Veiled, at least musically. Lyrically, I think I'm still kind of building towards that initial idea that I have in my mind, which is what eventually became the full-length album. But that demo tape, I, I think, is a very good introduction, a very good listen-to 
what I have to offer right out the gate with Veiled. And again, after we did the demo tape, Bonehead released for us. Thank you, Patrick. The Swarth Adolphus decided that he didn't want to be in the band anymore. And that was fine, you know. Thank you for all you did with Gnosis of the Witch and the demo tape unveiled. And then he parted ways. And that was the last time I spoke to him. Two years after Nefia Fiat, do you have any intention or any idea to get this demo on vinyl or on CD? I think the demo tape is going to stay a demo tape only because I really admire the early days of tape trading. I thought that was something, or I still, I do still think that's something that's really cool. And I would love to bring that back to nowadays, you know, just word of mouth and tape trading, new music. I think that's a really cool thing that should never die. So as of now, I don't think I'll ever change my mind on this, but I think that the demo will stay a demo tape. <laughs> Even if you get a lot of requests, but it's going to stay a demo tape. <laughs> I mean, you can listen to it on Spotify and Bandcamp and YouTube, but if you want a physical copy, you have to buy the demo tape. Hypnotic and atmospheric black metal inspired by those who paved the way during the early days. Veiled exists as a formless and entrance entity weaving through heavy reverberating fogs and holes beyond the void. A pure devotion to the shadows. Veiled brand a new effort. Black Celestial Orbs saw the light March 16 of 2018 via Iron Bone Head production on LP. I was say. If you like to present us this new album, Nefia Fiat, um, Black Seal, Celestial Orbs, and the work done with Demon on drums, and was all of the six track already written before? If not, when and how long has this been? Yeah, the, uh, you know, after Sport of has left the band, well, he actually left the band while we were writing the new record. And afterwards, I didn't initially speak to Dimon about it until the album was completely finished. But yeah, I, I presented music to Dimon in its entirety. It was written, it was completely finished. But making the album was actually really, really interesting because coming off the demo tape, I needed, I needed to find a way to expand on what I already presented for the first release. And like I said earlier, you know, my main inspirations for writing black metal are always going to be the, the pioneers that we know of. And I just wanted to create something that was, you know, hypnotic like Burzum and cold like Dark Throne and just pure darkness like Bathory. And I think those bands are just what captured the black metal sound perfectly. So while I was writing the record, I actually don't listen to black metal when I write an album because I don't want outside influences but I always have them in the back of my mind of what I like about black metal. So that's a nice little inside information of what goes into my mind of writing a record but yeah when I presented the album to Dimon it was it was completed. Helio Mother agreed to write or uh, produce it mix, it mix it, master it I'm really happy with the result, and so far, a lot of people seem to like it as well. I mean, our song titles. Yeah. First song would be Luminous, Portal, Enshrouded, Omnipotent, Black Celestial Orbs Part 1, Black Celestial Orbs Part 2. The song titles for the record. Okay, Vild recorded in 2017 the debut album Black Celestial Orbs in the Grey studio in Stockholm, Sweden, with producer and engineer Helge Mader, who is a singer and, uh, of Dark Funeral, Gra Curse 13, and Demon, who also play for Gra Curse 13, and When Nothing Remains on the Drum Throne. How was the recording gone with Helge Mader at uh, the Grey studio in Stockholm, and how was your trip there? I just interview Elja Mother 
for the second time I did interview him in 2016 when Dark Funeral had its album, new album out and I interviewed him a couple weeks ago for Grass new album and he told me that he had a great time working with you, that you guys had a great time together in Sweden. How was your staying in Sweden and how has everything gone with this work with Helge Mader? First of all, I have to say a enormous thank you to Iron Bonehead for making all of this happen. Without him, uh, the, the record never would have came out, first and foremost. But my time in Sweden was incredible, to say the least. I had a lot of fun. Um, Helio Mother and, and Dimon were excellent hosts. They are really great guys. I mean, I've been friends with them for a very long time. When we went to the studio, you know, it was no... No, uh, no games, no joke. We, you know, put in long hours to make this record happen, and everyone when performed to the highest, highest standards that I could, anyone could possibly ask for. Um, I think we created something pretty uh, special and unique. For me personally, I think it's the best thing I've ever done. But Sweden as a country is an amazing place, absolutely beautiful. You know, people are great. Nature is incredible. Yeah, I mean, it was just a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed it. The, the guys made it very, very easy to get comfortable in a new place, considering that was my first time overseas. What was your recording experience there at the Grey Studio record? Very demanding, long hours, a lot of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, the experience was great. I Like I said, they, they really pushed me to produce the best album I possibly could. I mean, we had a saying in the studio, results matter. That was our motto the whole time. You know, if we didn't like something, we, we did it again. If we didn't like it, we did it again. We changed it, we moved things around. It was just a matter of really making sure that the time I spent there was used to the absolute fullest. And I, I really respect the way those guys work because they made me a better musician because of it. Yeah, sure. I believe that these guys has taken their time, I mean, in order for you to get something very perfect out, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And Dimon really brought a, a new, not only a new vibe, but a whole new experience behind the drum kit, as opposed to what Sporta Dothas did on the demo. Dimon is an incredible drummer. He's one of my all-time favorite drummers. I just love his style. I love how he really approaches the kit when writing music and your mother is he, he he's no joke when it when it's work time it's work time he really did not accept anything less than perfection man those uh, guys are the real deal for sure <laughs> you know i was so surprised when i found out that this guy i mean uh, it's not only the vocalist of Dark Funeral, but he has his own band. He plays all kind of instrument, and now he's a, he's a sound engineer. He's a, a <laughs> he has his own record label. Wow, I was surprised. He's a, he's a very busy man for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. <laughs> the band was invited by Winter Forge Promotion to be part of. A show which was held last March 29th with more bands like Wig and Withered. How was the debut, the band debut show been and who was part of the band lineup as a live band? The debut show was actually really interesting. Um, it was my first show that I played in over 10 years. So, of course, I had a little bit of a... I would say a little bit of nerves, not too much, but once I got back on stage, I just felt familiar again, like, oh, okay, I know what I'm doing. But, um, yeah, the people that came out really enjoyed what we did. Other bands were excellent. Withered was great. Wake was absolutely crushing. You know, we sold we sold a good bit of merch. People liked our, our style. I mean, it was a good time. I, I really enjoyed it. I, you know, I, playing live is one thing that I love more than anything and for them to give us that first show was really cool it, it was a lot of fun and the guys that i brought in to play with me are local guys here in pittsburgh they've been in other bands before valdovez on lead guitar drekovic on bass and cytheros on drums 
guys, great musicians, and I'm really happy to have them along with me as, as I'm bringing Bailed into a, a, a live setting now. Uh, shout out to those guys. Thank you very much. Nephew Fiat, do you believe Sings, Demon, and Hulge Matter, I believe they start touring again. They are touring now this weekend self in promotion of their new album, Vazen. Do you believe still get Demon to play, uh, to perform with you live sometimes? Considering that we live on two different continents, it would, of course, be very difficult to make this happen. But it's something that we really would like to do in the future. It's just a matter of, you know, everything lining up perfectly for it to happen. But one day, it's going to happen. One day. Any plans to go to Europe? We would love to. There's no plans at the moment to make it happen. We're still kind of getting our feet wet here in the States. But we definitely would like to go to Europe as soon as humanly possible. Mm.
also have on my schedule that you guys were supposed to play at a Smiling Moose in Pittsburgh. It was April 6th. How uh, was that show? Uh, how did the show end? Oh, the show went pretty well. It was kind of a mixed bag of metal bands on that night. I mean, it wasn't like a you know a strictly black metal band because we kind of happened to be the only real black metal band in Pittsburgh that I know of, at least. But it was it was all right. You know, the reaction was pretty cool. Uh, again, people seem to really like what we do, and I have no complaints there. It was a cool show. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Very great. I'm very satisfied. I'm very happy to hear these great exceptions from uh, the fans, especially now that after 10 years and you get this great support back. Oh, absolutely. I, everything's been going so smoothly in such a short period of time. I'm really satisfied with how it's going so far. And this is only the beginning. I'm going to push this as far as I possibly can. Failed. Please a style of occult black metal uh, that is a uh, very raw and traditional sounding. The production sound uh, very dark and raw while uh, the lyrics cover mysticism and darkness stems. For those who didn't hear this album yet, I mean, I want to thank you, Nefia Fiat, to send me this great album. And uh, I love the, all the six songs on uh, this album. Very great music once again i want to congratulate you to put out this great new album black celestial orbs and i highly recommend to all of you out there please take a look take a second go on youtube listen to these songs if you didn't buy the album as yet and if you didn't buy the album listen to these songs and go out there buy this album because you must have you must have this great album in your collection. Nefia Fiat, for what concern 2018, we are like at the half of the year. What else do you have scheduled for the band for this year? Well, first of all, thank you very much for your kind words. I, I greatly appreciate that. I greatly appreciate you showing support for the music I write. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. For the rest of the year, you know, we're going to be a little more picky with our shows. We're definitely going to play live, that's for sure. We have one actual booked show in November. It's the only show we have lined up at the moment, but I'm sure we'll sprinkle some more in throughout the summer. I think I may start writing new music. I don't have any plans for a new album at the moment, but I'm always going to be writing new music, so who knows? My mind can change at any point. But yeah, I think 2018 is going to just basically be focused on becoming tighter as a band, playing live, and just writing music. Do you believe that you're gonna just play in around doing shows in the US only or are you gonna go over to different places in North America? We've already played out of state once so far in our very short list of shows. I mean whoever will bring us will go anywhere. We're not gonna just stick to our hometown because that can get pretty old pretty quickly. You know, we want to branch out and bring our music to as many people as possible. So whoever wants to book us, you know, we'll come. We'll come and play. Okay, so you all know out there, please get in touch with this band, Veiled. And if you want them to play for you, contact Nefia Fiat right away because this band is out there to show you what's real, what's the real black metal is about. Okay, Nefia Fiat, I want to thank you once again for making this great interview possible. And if it's still anything you want to add to this interview, I will hand you over the microphone of Man of Messiah Radio for you to do so. And to all of uh, the band's fans, Veil are a very great sounding occult black metal band. And if you are a die hard fan of this uh, musical genre, you should check this album out, Black Cell Cell Arps, and support the band buying its merchandises and attend its shows, whatever they may be. Okay, the microphone is all yours, Nefia Fiat. Uh, thank you very much for the interview. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you to everyone who's listened to our music. Again, appreciate it. Support underground black metal. Nefia Fiat, thank you very much. It was a great pleasure for me. And like I always say, metal on. Bye-bye. Bye. Hello, this is Nisithiel of the American black metal band Veiled, and I would like to congratulate Metal Messiah Radio with its 10-year anniversary.